just right here. It's about 30 minutes in from the ship. Cross the street. This is, I definitely recommend this way into town. Harim, Harimaibashi Shutengai. This is all covered. So if it's raining, if you're here in the winter, you'll stay covered. It's very hot, like down in the summer, you'll stay nice and a little bit air conditioned. You can walk straight through here to all the main sites of the town. And right in front of the entrance to Harimbashi Shutengai is this. This is the Kochi Yosakoi Museum. It's a free museum which is all about the Yosakoi festival here. It's a world famous festival of dance, music, colors, costumes, history and traditions all together. And this is open from 10 until 6 every day. They even have free Wi-Fi. It's free and it's a lovely way to get introduced to the culture of this specific area. And this is inside the museum. And you can see there are costumes from the festivals. This is an example of what people wear when they're dancing. Uh, there's information points uh, showing different uh, troops, different groups of dancers, and different information about how it's evolved over the years. Um, so as you walk to the museum, you can come inside. There's an area where you can put on kimono, like you would in the shows, and they have these little clappers that you can hear, and you can go into the room and join in with the music and the parade, shaking your clappers, wearing your costume. Now when you're walking around in here, check out this store here, it's called Melody. Um, I love the man who's working here. They have a counter out front with loads of kimono for men and women. They have children's sizes inside, they have loads of beautiful, beautiful outfits, all made with silk. We just bought one each, really beautiful ones, uh, one for Nick, a man's one and a woman's one for me, and they were only a thousand yen, and they are gorgeous. Now Japan has a lot of wonderful things that you can buy in the shops, and they also have <laughs> fish slippers for only a thousand yen you too can have your very own fish this is the Sunday market and um, so it's on every Sunday uh, it's hot out there's loads of things for sale here lots of little stalls with local yummy things so the Sunday market is mainly food, a food market. There's also flowers, spices, there's fruit, vegetables, fresh fish. Uh, this is the place that locals will come to get their food. At the end of the market, you'll find this area with lots of uh, different things. There's bric-a-brac, there are uh, lovely plates, um, very good deals here. Um, for example, the beautiful plate of my Fuji, it's about $10. I just got a sort of belt for my kimono over here for just 500 yen. Uh, the lady showed me them. There are lots of beautiful things here. And next to Sunday market, this is Hirome market, the main market. It's inside, it's air-conditioned, and this is the place to go for food. So we're shopping for some food inside the market. This is the local thing to have here in Kochi. This is katsuo, uh, which is bonita fish. Um, so it's very raw, well, tiny, 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 lightly seared bonita fish. It's very meaty. Um, the fish is kind of re is related to tuna. So it's very pink and very delicious. It's locally caught. Ah, yummy! <laughs> and if you want to try the bonito, this is a great place to try it. Absolutely delicious. And this is the entrance to, market, to the market coming from the air conditioning mall side. It looks like this. Just follow the neko. This is the Kochi Castle Museum of History. It's located right next to the castle itself. Um, you can buy your tickets are combined. It lets you into both of them. Uh, this is a good spot to start if it's hot you can cool down it's air conditioned and learn all about the history of the castle um, and the region as well up on the third floor there's a section that says history of castles in japan this is fantastic um, it's, it explains in a very clear very simple but straight to the point way exactly how castles uh, developed in Japan, starting back in the Yayoi period, um, at prehistory, telling you that the villages used to be, uh, used to have walls around them just to protect people, and then it moves on to um, a thousand years later, a thousand years ago, um, ancient classical periods, the fortifications, and they used the Chinese technology, and then they were protected by wooden palisades. This moves on to the Kamakura period, um, in the medieval times, um, 800 years ago, uh, showing that the castles became hubs of defences, and then the Muromachi and Warring States, they moved the castles up onto mountain tops to have a little bit extra defence using the landscape um, as a way to protect themselves. Then this became more advanced um, and this became a symbol of the authority of the warlords in the pre-modern ages about 500 years ago, moving into the Edo period from 1600 to 1868. Um, this was kind of the golden age of castle building. Uh, these beautiful, luxurious castles were built not only for defence um, but for symbols of 
um, authority, symbols of wealth, symbols of power. And this is when they were built there and they weren't needed as much for defence and they were more for beauty and status and to showcase the artisans of the country. Really good. Uh, also, there is a really interesting exhibit on um, war, what was used in it. This is the suit of armour by uh, Yamauchi Tanoyashi, who was an important warrior here. And this is his armour, and then you can also see this was kind of the underwear that you'd wear underneath the armour. You can even try on some of the war helmets. Here's Nick wearing the famous bunny helmet. We've been to the museum and learned all about the history of the castle, how it was built, how the fortifications are, the walls, um, who built it, now it's time to see. And at the entrance to the castle, make sure you check out the huge bronze statue on the horse of Yamauchi Takutoyo, who was the first lord of the castle here. And he started the whole place, he moved in in 1601. The castle is very well designed to protect from intruders. As you come in, we go up the steps here, you can see they're designed uh, to be different sizes, different heights. They're constantly changing, they're uneven. This is so if attackers were running in, it would be very difficult to run up in towards the castle. But if you're coming down and out uh, to defend from the inside out, it's much easier. Now, the design of the walls is also very interesting. You can see there's the larger walls with the smaller bricks in the middle of it. This has been designed to help uh, water come out of it and it also means that it's very, very protected. It's very intense, it's very dense, it's very close together. These are very thick walls. No one is going to burst through these. You cannot get through these. Um, and also you can see that uh, this is drainage, part of the drainage system coming up here. Uh, it rains a lot in this prefecture, uh, not in August, but most of the year it does. So this is how the water would come out. Also inside the walls, having the large rocks with the smaller ones means that there's also space for moss to grow and this also makes it greener, it protects it and it also means that water can come all the way through there and it drains it very well and they have these special drainage systems coming out um, uh, systematically all throughout the walls. Uh, as you come in look out for this statue, this is Chio, this is Katsutoyo's wife and uh, she was instrumental in everything that he did, having this castle built, his power, um, she was a great support. They got married when she was only 17 because her parents had died when she was very young and so she was uh, brought into, into the family and uh, she helped him raise his status, his military status and um, the power and the arts that he managed to, uh, to create in the area and have the castle built. She was behind a lot of it. Now as you come up towards the main um, part of the castle here, this is the Sumemon, which is a guardroom gate or a trick gate. This was designed to look like the proper gate into uh, the top of the castle, but it's not, it's just a trick. So if anyone tried to break in here, they would find themselves inside another um, courtway, which was very, very well protected, and it'd be fired up at every angle by arrows. It's very smart. It's actually just used to store grain, um, and it had three tatami rooms in it, so guards could keep an eye out from inside there, and it was a comfortable place uh, for sitting as well. There's three hidden portholes on the east and uh, five on the west side as well, um, so that you could, it was basically a spy place, and they would also keep salt in here. Then you come up here, and um, we've got a bell here. This was the bell that was used to warn the city, warn the people, and all the samurai working here, all the soldiers, if there was an attack. Whoever saw it first would ring it here, everyone would get ready and fend off the intruders. And when you get up to the top to go into the castle, you come in here, shoes outside, and there's a map of the castle floor, there's all five floors plus the tower, and you come in, you can see it's all very Japanese lovely. Another good defence feature are these little things, and they're stone dropping holes, where literally if anyone did manage to get in the first of several layers, and uh, once they got here, they would have big stones dropped on their heads. And here we've got all the windows are lined with this so that the archers could shoot arrows out of them but they couldn't be shot back in at them. Just to be aware when you're climbing up the steps, um, they are very steep. So this is the top level once you climb up all the very steep stairs to get here. You can go outside and there's balconies like um, each, each direction. And you can see all around the whole city uh, to the hills beyond from. Really beautiful view.